Let's turn our Bibles to the book of James, James chapter 4, James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. The title message is, When the Devil Attacks, When the Devil Attacks, When the Devil Attacks, James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, James 4, verse 7, the Bible says, submit yourselves Therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Father God, we thank you once again for another day you allow us to live. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the blood which was shed on Calvary's cross to wash our sins away. Father God, and by just trusting, not alone, our sins are forgiven, washed, and we are still with the Holy Ghost of promise. Amen. Lord God, we are here to listen to your word. Yes. We ask you that you speak within your preacher, fill him with your Holy Spirit, give the power, liberty, and authority from on high to declare your word unto your ears. Open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Yes. It is not our job to correct the preacher or your word, but is to your preacher and to your word to correct us. Yes, and, uh, we are living the last day perilous times, and the devil is doing his best to destroy the church, Lord yes. God. We ask you for your protection and help us be vigilant and be watchful, Lord God, in these last days, and not be deceived by the devices of the devil, but help each and every one of us to be ever awakened to realize that we are indeed in the last days, and souls are burning in hell, and the saints are falling, falling, Lord God, pray that you will hold us up and help us to edify each other, and and as tell as many souls of what you've done for them, Amen. Lord God. Please be with the service. We thank you, love you, and we pray for you soon. We turn in Jesus' name, pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> Very familiar topic. You know, but the title message says, when the devil attacks. So it is not a matter of if, it's just when. Right. And devil will attack every single Christian out there. Yeah. The goal of the devil is to make you as useless as possible as a Christian. Right. Devil doesn't want you to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Right. Devil wants you, does not want you to live a holy life. Right. Devil wants you to be conform to this world. Devil wants you to be just like any other person out there. A lot of Christians always say, you know, we fight the flesh. You are so consumed with fighting with your flesh, you forget about the biggest, you know, enemy out there. You look at yourself in the mirror and you say, okay, I'm not going to let you in today, right? You know, you're dead already. You know, nothing wrong with that. But however, sometimes you and I tend to forget that devil's always out there. Devil's always trying to scheme his way, figure a way out to take you down. And when you are least suspecting, that's when devil will attack you. Devil always <coughs> has a long picture view. Unlike you and me, where majority of the times we are short, you know, we have a short view of things. Right. If things doesn't happen right away, we get angry. If things doesn't happen right away, we get frustrated. If things doesn't happen right away, we get impatient. The things doesn't happen right away, we start blaming everybody else. Devil knows our tendencies. Right. So devil's always planting a seed everywhere, every part of your life, at home, at work, you know, at church, everywhere, devil is planting a seed so that he'll be able to attack you, so that he'll be able to destroy you at the perfect moment. Devil knows the perfect moment. Think about it. Devil attacked, you know, David, man of God's own heart. David. And you don't be naive that you're better than David. We're not, right? Devil took him down. Why? Because he's always ready to attack. And he's always devising a plan 
So first things first, number one, you have to recognize that devil is constantly attacking you. Whether you admit it or not, you know, in the sight of the devil, he really, really, really hates you. You know, there's no friendly devil out there, right? Devil just wants to destroy you, you know, upside down, left to right. Devil wants to stomp on you all the time. I'm not sure how cognizant, how much you thought about the devil's attacks in your life. Because you always think about, okay, I'm not going to let the world attack me, right? Good. I'm not going to let the flesh attack me. Good. But you, sometimes you leave the devil out because you watch things, you know, you feel things. However, the devil is behind all of it. You know, the devil's like, okay, hey, don't think about me too much. You know, don't think about me, right? You know, just think about, you know, what's going on in the world, right? Be consumed of it, you know. Think about how you're feeling. But inside, you know, devil's always scheming. Okay, okay, let's see. This guy, you know, he thinks he's so close to God. He hasn't committed sin in a while, right? He thinks he's holy. All right, let's see what happens, you know. That's why you have to recognize. That's why, you know, the Bible says be vigilant. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And people have a wrong idea of the devil that devil, you know, if you leave him alone, he's going to leave you alone. No, never. He wants to do what the Bible says here. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, again, devil is your adversary. Devil's never your friend. Devil's never your neighbor. Devil's never your, you know, just someone that's stranger to you. No, devil is your adversary. As a roaring lion walketh about. You know, lion, they're scary beings. Yeah. I mean, when you go to the zoo, do you want to jump into the cage? No. You know, the pen of where the lion is and then just start playing around with it because they look very cute. You know, they have a you know, good mane, you know. No, they're going to try to devour you. Walk at the bar seeking whom he may devour. Devil just wants to destroy you, but he has his plan. So in a war, in a spiritual battle, you have to understand that one day, if it hasn't happened to you already, devil's going to do his best, and devil's going to attack you when you least expect it. Christians who are not expecting, who's complacent, who's proud, you know, who thinks everything's okay in their life, that's when they're going to get hit. That's when devil's going to attack. You know, it could be through finances, it could be through health, it could be through relationship. Whatever it may be, devil's going to attack so when the devil attacks, what are you going to do? What have you been doing? Right? Because a lot of people, you know, worst thing about a fight is that when you get blindsided, you usually lose or you have a heavy, heavy casualty on your side. Right. You know, when people are fighting, say, for example, in a boxing match, you know, or like, you know, mixed martial arts, people get knocked out a lot of times when they get blindsided. Yeah. Right? Yes. You know, they're attacking with right hand, but they're not defending with the left. And suddenly, the punch comes in so fast that it hits them in the temple or right there in the jaw, and then they get knocked out. Yeah. And they don't even know what happened. A lot of times, it happens to Christians the same way. You're only looking at one side, one view, and you're attacking and attacking. So you're thinking, I'm fine, you know. But suddenly, the devil goes, okay, all I need is that one split second. I just need that split second to get you. Right? And you put your guards down, right? And then he just comes in and you get knocked out. Yeah. As a Christian, I don't know, it's coming from experience. When you get knocked out, it hurts. Yeah. I mean, think about it. It hurts spiritually, it hurts physically, it hurts mentally all the way around. Yeah. Yeah. Then what are you going to do? Because none of us have a record of 100% winning percentage against the devil. Right. Because we're not stronger than the devil. Right? However, your winning percentage should increase as you grow as a Christian. I mean, if you've been knocked down all the time, beginning of your Christian years, which is expected because you're just a baby, right? 
maybe it's not going to be able to fight against you know, a giant. But however, you have to grow up, and you have to start training. I mean, think about it. David was just a young man when he fought Goliath. But he trained himself. You know, God trained him. He trusted in him. So you have to recognize that, you know what? Devil's attacking me. And when the devil do attack me, you know, I know it's from the devil. You know, sometimes people don't realize that it's from the devil, right? Sometimes you just start blaming everybody. You know, that's a tendency that you and I have to get rid of, you know? Just blaming mentality, right? Now, Bob Jones Sr. always said, the problem is with you. So his problem is with me. You know, I'm, I'm being attacked by the devil. It's because of me, yeah. right? 99.9999% of the time, it's because of you and me, right? Because of your own actions, because of your own faults, because of your own pride, because of your own sins. That's why it's happening. Because you and I are not like Joe, right? He was a perfect man, but he got attacked. I mean, he lost his children. He lost his possessions, right? Yes. I mean, his wife. I mean, his wife was like cursing. And then all these things were happening. But you and I could learn a great deal from Job. Right? So number one thing is you and I have to recognize. And after, when you recognize that it's the attack from the devil, here are the actions you and I have to take. First thing, let's go to Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1. And every time you read Job, and you get amazed by this man. And when we go to heaven... You know, there's going to be a line, you know, line of tables maybe, you know, think about it. And then Job's going to have a long line too because people want to talk to him. Yeah. Obviously, Adam and Eve will have the longest line, you know, and then there's going to be other folks. Yeah. Job chapter 1, verse 20. Job chapter 1, verse 20. Job chapter 1, verse 20. The Bible says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head. And fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, think about it, in all this, you just lost your children, you just lost everything. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. So the first thing Job did, verse 20, he worshipped. Job had a prayer meeting right away. You know, when devil attacks, you have to have your own prayer meeting right away. You got to pray. Whether, you know, I mean, whatever's happening out there when you're being attacked, first thing you have to do is you have to have a prayer meeting with the Lord. Simple as that. I mean, Job worship. I mean, if you were to lose everything in your life, what's the first thing are you going to do? Are you going to go to your accountant, right? Are you going to go to your boss? What are you going to do? You got to be like Job. You have to have a prayer meeting right away. Easier said than done. Yeah. You know, there's reason why people think that, you know, it's really, really hard to go to the Lord when things aren't going your way. Yeah, it's hard. Because, say, if you're going through a physical hardship, you have illness or disease, right? It's really hard for you to move. It's hard for you to even kneel down, right? And you, as a critical Christian, telling that brother or sister, hey, get on your knees and pray. It doesn't work like that, right? It's hard. I mean, imagine if you broke your leg. Imagine if you can't use your leg. Imagine if you can't get up easily. It's the hardest thing for you to do. It's not your job to be critical of other Christians. That's why you always have to look at yourself, right? You look at yourself. Don't look at other people and don't criticize other Christians. You have to look at yourself and you have to realize that, man, that alone, if you ever had those type of thoughts alone, you need to get on your knees and get right with the Lord. 
because that requires a prayer meeting. Prayer meeting is not only for when you lose everything. Prayer meeting is when you start going the other way. Yes. Think about it. For a little bit after the mountaintop experience at the summer camp, you know, you felt like you're really close to the Lord. And you wanted to witness to everybody. About a month has gone by, you know. Where are you right now? Okay. I mean, do you still have the same zeal? Do you still have the same love, okay. right? Amen. You don't have it. So get on your knees and recognize that yes. devil has got you. A lot of times, Christians will always deny and deny and deny. You know? People who are close to the Lord and who wants to be close to the Lord, they just admit it. They accept it. Amen. You have to accept that you're a sinner who's going to lose to the devil 100 times out of 100. So you need to trust the Lord, the word of God, the prayer to defeat the devil. And just because yesterday you led someone to the Lord, don't get me wrong. Great. Praise the Lord. You can't be suddenly feeling that oh, okay, I must be living really right. No. I mean, you could lead someone to the Lord and you could still gamble your way. Yeah. You could still lead someone to the Lord and you could be having adulterous life. Yeah. You could lead someone to the Lord and then you could be cussing and lying all your time. Yeah. I mean, God says God is not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. So God could use anybody to lead someone to the Lord. Right. So don't think that you're that special person right. who's okay. Yeah, you're never okay. You and I have to be in a constant battle mode, yeah. whether you like it or not, right? Yes. I mean, yesterday an unfortunate thing happened. You know, you know President Trump, there was an assassination at, you know, attempt. Right? You always have to look. I mean, I don't think anybody thought that, you know, that would be possible. I don't think this has happened since, I don't know, they say in the days of Reagan. You know, that's a long, long, long time ago. You know, that many of the folks listening or here probably weren't even born. You know, during the days of Reagan, right? Do you think that those Secret Service has up there, like, oh, you know, it's okay. It's not going to happen, right? It did happen. Yeah, right. Same thing with you, you know. It's going to happen to you. Amen. Well, are you going to be prepared for it or not? Yeah. Right? Yes. I mean, even though, you know, by grace of God always, you know, President Trump didn't, get hurt much, except, you know, his ear. Right. But one person died yeah. right, because of that. Yeah, totally. A young man, yeah. 30, in his 30s. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, you're so naive. It's not going to happen to me. It will happen to you. Yeah, right. You know, one word that you and I should never use is never. Yeah. Right? right? Except for salvation. Right. You and I will never burn in hell if you trust that Jesus Christ and him alone as your Lord and Savior. Yeah, man. man, I love that never, that I'll never burn in hell. Yeah. No matter what, Thanks right? Lord. Yeah. However, everything else in life is, you could do it. Yeah. You could be that shooter. I could be that shooter. Yeah. Who knows, right? right? Don't be naive that, oh, I'm not going to be that person. When you think that, then you're going to be that person. That's why you have to go to the prayer meeting. Lord, you know, suddenly pride came into my heart. You know, looking down on people, thinking that I'm better than what I really am. Right? You're not. That's right. You and I are just less than nothing. Amen. You and I don't deserve anything. That's right. I mean, think about it. Job said, naked shall I return thither. Naked came out of my mother's womb. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. He was like, whether I'm rich, whether I'm poor, whether I have something or whether I have nothing, it's from the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord right away. I mean, little things that's going to happen in your life. You know, unfortunately, as we grow older, your body's going to break down. Right? Yes. And sometimes you don't want it to happen. Right. But it does happen. Right. Then what are you going to do when those things do happen? Right? You have arthritis. Right? You have back pain. Right? You have sprains, you have everything that's happening to you. Yeah. You have headaches, right? You know, you have some conditions. It just started happening. What are you going to do? 
you have to go to the prayer meeting. Amen. As much as and as simple as it sounds, it's the hardest thing to do because devil does not want you to pray. Right. Devil doesn't want you to rely on the Lord. Yeah. Devil wants you to rely on every other thing. Devil wants you to rely on the technology. Devil wants you to rely on your own doctors. Devil wants you to rely on, you know, WebMD. Devil wants you to rely on your, your computer, your TV, you know, your psychology, psychiatrist. You know, go to your BFS out there. Devil wants you to go to every single person out there. Call your third cousin, fourth cousin, you know, call your long distance relative. But devil doesn't want you to go to the prayer. If devil can stop you from praying to the Lord and have that prayer meeting, like Job did, then he succeeded because he's going to continuously attack you. And he knows the ammo. Okay, when I, you know, we don't believe in these things, right? You know, but they, you know, these cults have like the, you know, voodoo dolls, right? <laughs> and then they take out a needle out and then they just start pinching it, pinching it. Right. And they're like, oh, I pinched the stomach, nothing happened, too much fat, right? So, okay, I'm going to pinch, you know, maybe the head, right? You know, or the arm, or the side. And then, you know, don't believe in those things, but, you know, say those things. Devil knows you. Yeah, you know, devil has you like that doll. Same way. Yeah, they was like, okay, this guy, you know, if I attack him, you know, through finances, oh, nothing happens. You know, this woman, if I attack her through, say, finances, nothing happens. Oh, you know what? Then I got to find different ways, right? Yeah. Oh, maybe health. You know, let me get that health. Oh, man, this guy, you know, he doesn't spend time with the Lord every time I, you know, get on his health. And then continuously pressing it and pressing it and pressing it. And then what happens? Christian becomes bitter. Christian becomes bitter against the Lord. And they don't want to do anything. And they become robotic a lot of times. You know, that's why you have to watch out. If you are a Christian and your Christian life has become robotic, Everything has become just mundane. You know, you just do it out of habit. Yeah. Then you need to have a prayer meeting. Yes. What has happened to you is that everything has become so stagnant. When devil says, okay, good, good, good. You know, I like stagnant. You know, I like stagnant. You being stagnant is good for me. Because when I attack you, you won't know what to do. Right? Because you're not ready for me. Right. You know, can you honestly say that you are ready for devil's attack right now? No. I mean, it's foolish to say it in the first place, right. right? Each time, you have to make sure that you leave everything to the Lord. Amen. I mean, how much prayer is in your life, right? I mean, do you pray constantly? I mean, I can't really see anybody, including myself, if I haven't been praying always, like the Bible says, when devil attacks, how am I going to go to the Lord in, the Lord, Lord, to the Lord in prayer? Yeah. It's not embedded in me. It's not something that I do regularly. No. It's hard. So what do I do? What you do when those things happen? You just complain. right? Yeah. Why is this happening to me? Instead of worshiping. Right. You know, complaining and worshiping is different. Amen. Right? You know, when, when Job worshiped the Lord, he just gave glory to God. When was the last time you gave glory to God for your attacks, for infirmities, right? right? I mean, I have to think, right? You know, sometimes I get gout. It hurts. I mean, it's really, really, really painful thing, right? Am like, I going to just grab my ankle, you know, wherever it is, and just crying all night? Oh, why me? Why me? You know, I can't fall asleep. Why me? You know, why me, Lord? You know, or, I mean, you get through, you ask the Lord for strength, and you pray. Yeah. And you pray, and you have pray. And believe it or not, Lord gives you that strength when you trust in Him. Amen. Instead of trusting in yourself, instead of trusting in you know, almighty, you know, medicine. I'm not saying it's wrong, right? You know, you do use it because God has provided you there. But what are you trusting the most? Job always trusted the Lord first. Number one priority was God, right? And then let everything fall. When something happens to you, when devil attacks you, no matter what, it doesn't matter. You could lose your wife, 
You could lose your husband. You could lose your family. You could lose your job. You could lose your health. You have to put God first. Amen. No matter what, yes. you have to pray to the Lord. Yes. Think about it. You choose God when devil attacks because devil will always give you a choice. You know, Job had a choice. Yeah, God gives you choice, right? Job could have cursed God, and you know, just had a prayer of you know, blaming God for everything. I'm a just man, you know. I try to live perfect life. Lord God, how can you do this to me, right? You know, but if you give a human being long enough time, just like. Law of entropy, like thermodynamics, you know. Things do degenerate. Yes. So Job, it does happen to Job right. later in, right? But, you know, he got everything back and more. When you give up something for the Lord, because Satan, when he attacks, he wants you to give up something. He wants you to sacrifice. And God wants to see if you're going to sacrifice for him or not. Because God has to test you, Right? right? to see whether you are going to go to the next level, whether you truly love me or not. How can you know if someone truly loves you when they sacrifice, Amen. when they give up something, right. right? I mean, Lord Jesus Christ gave up his life for us. Thank you, Lord. I mean, that is the essence, yes. right, of showing love and charity. Amen. When was last time you gave up anything for the Lord? Wow. That's why... Satan constantly attacks you. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I mean, because love of money is root of all evil. Yes. You know, first Timothy chapter 6. So, devil's going to always attack you in that regard. Hey, here's some money. You know, here's opportunity to get more money. Right? Mm -hmm. And devil knows exactly what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, okay. You know, I'm still going to go to church every Sunday. I'm going to be at church on Wednesday. I'm going to be at all the street ministries. You know what? But at home, I'll do something else. The best way to know whether you're right with the Lord, the best way to know when you recognize devil's attack is you're same here, you're same at home, you're same at work, you're same in your bathroom, you're same in your kitchen, you're same in your bedroom, you're Amen. same in your living room. Amen. If any part of those life is different, then something's wrong with you. Yes. You got something to hide. Amen. Devil's got a hold of you, right? Why would you act differently in the bathroom, kitchen, bedroom than over here? Right. You have something to hide, right? Satan's like, yeah, you do. You got something to hide. So just, just you know, just let the preacher preach and just let it go by, you know? You know, best thing for non-moving Christian, non-convicted Christian, good-for-nothing Christians to do is let it come in one year, let it go out the other, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. You know, even the Holy Spirit is, you know, convicting you. You're like, ah, it's okay, right? So the devil will use that opportunity going back to finances, right? Okay. You know, Lord, even though Lord gave me everything, Lord provides all of my needs, right? And then I've been doing good. I've been reading the Bible, I've been praying, you know, and then doing the best I can as a Christian. But suddenly, devil opens up an opportunity. Yeah. You're not going to miss church. You're still going to have time to do God's things. But you know what? You've got to cut some, some hours of it, some minutes of it. It's like, okay. So you start looking at things, you start working on things, you know, you're still meeting your quotas, but your heart is not there 100% anymore. Yeah. And you're like, oh, like, okay, Lord, you know I'm still doing this for you. But I got other things to take care of. And suddenly, Lord starts to become smaller and smaller, and other thing is growing. And you don't realize it. Right. Because one day, devil goes, okay, let it grow and grow and grow and grow. When it's time for him to truly attack you, he's going to explode this thing. And what happens to this side? He can't handle it anymore. It's gone. Yeah. And at that point, you will have committed 
big sin. By that time, and it's going to be hard for you to get up right away. And you're going to take that dreaded detour in your life as a Christian. All the time, all the years, you're going to start wasting. Wasting. Do you know why we always preach your testimony is so important? Because once you lose it, it's so hard to get it back. Once you lose it, it's going to take months and years to get it back. You might never get it back. What happens? Why did those things happen? Because you thought lightly of devil's attacks. I'm like, okay, it's okay. I used to give the Lord 100 minutes. Um, I could still give him 90 minutes. The other 10 minutes, you know, I'm just going to do some other stuff. Truly, if you are growing as a Christian, it's going to grow more and more. You're going to give more time to the Lord. If you were giving 100 minutes, you're going to try to give 101, yeah. 110 instead of the other way. You know, I'm giving majority. God doesn't want just your majority. God wants everything. Amen. That's when you and I always forget, you know, God have my majority. No, God wants everything. Yes. You know, God is a holy, perfect God. Yes. He doesn't compromise at all. So if you look at your Christian life right now, when the devil attacks, are you praying to the Lord? Lord, there's got to be some part of my life. I'm not giving you my all. Help me to reflect on it. Help me to find it. Help me to confess it and get right. Yes. Instead of always praying, Lord, give me a heart like Job. Help me to get through this. And there's no details. right? That's, that's all you pray. And then the Lord's like, what? What else? Yeah. Right? Because you ain't Job. <laughs> and you don't think like Job. Right. So what else? So you have to really reflect on yourself. Yes. You kind of have to examine yourself. Amen. Right? And you have to judge yourself. Like yes. the Bible says. That's a great, great thing to do as a start. In order to understand how devil attacks you, in order to understand how to resist the devil, obviously the Bible has the answer, but you have to start examining yourself. Yes. Where am I? Who am I? Literally. Besides from universally, we're all, if you trust in Christ, you're sinners saved by grace. That's it. But besides from that, you and I are all different. You have your own weaknesses. I have my own weaknesses. You have your strengths. I have my strengths. So you have to know both of them. Yeah. You know, if you rely on your strength too much, you're going to become proud. If you rely on your weakness so much, you know, you're going to become always, you know, self-pity Christian. So you have to understand that in this fight that I have, spiritual battle with the devil, I have to examine myself. Yes. As you read the Word of God, constantly one theme is like from Apostle Paul, if you read Pauline Apostle, is that he always knew who he was. Yeah. And he never wanted to give glory to himself. Yeah. Right? And you and I have to understand that. I mean, is there any part of your life you know, where you're trying to give glory to yourself? Right? You try to give glory to yourself for your health? Because, you know, I pity those people who think that they could live forever because they take like thousand supplements, you know. They do all kinds of exercise. Don't get me wrong. You have to be healthy. You know, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. But they rely on those things. But God goes, it's time. You get heart attack and they're dead. I don't know. They're the healthiest people that people ever knew. But what happened? Right? As Christians, you should never rely on that regard. Right? And don't ever rely on your finances. You work hard. Let God provide you. Right? But you can't let the finances take control of your life. You know, a lot of Christians no longer sit here because why? Because they want more money. And when you love money, what happens? You fall into temptations, you know, hasty temptations. You want to be quick. You know, America is all about quick, rich schemes all the time. Right? You know, don't believe those stuff. You know, those are all carn artists, right? Oh, yeah, you spend 100 bucks and it's going to turn into a million bucks. I don't think so, right? Because it's because you're a car artist. That's right. You know, that's why Ponzi schemes are everywhere. Let me think about Bernie Madoff, you know. 
I mean, he stole billions of dollars from people. Right? That's, that's part of it. You just work hard, be diligent. You know, let the Lord provide you. And if you get more than what you deserve, you know, always constantly praise God for it. Amen. That's why think about your prayer life. Are you really praying? You know, that's why I reflect. Man, every time the devil attacked me, every time I fell, I could point to that time because my prayer life wasn't as it needed to be. Right? It's not about, you know, being super spiritual. No, you just have to pray. You know, and now another good example is Nehemiah. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. You know, Nehemiah prayer. You and I have to get in the habit of praying always. If you really want to defeat the devil's attack, you just have to pray. And as you pray more and more, you realize more and more how wicked you are. You realize more and more how weak you are. You realize more and more how incompetent you are. You realize more and more, man, you got no strength. You could only rely on the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 3. And said unto the king, let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be set when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Verse 4. Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? You know, Nehemiah didn't do like a justification, you know, explain, you know, theory of relativity. Nehemiah didn't do, you know, going to a, you know, doctrinal study of the word of God. No. So I pray to the God of heaven. Amen. He just pray. Yeah. Pray right away, right? I mean, it's such a cliche thing to say, but it's the most important thing as a Christian, I believe, because you have to pray. Yes. Yes. You have to pray. I mean, if you truly pray from your heart to the Lord and you're willing to follow the Lord's will no matter what, then you're going to be set straight. Yeah. You have wrong doctrines, Lord's going to set it straight for you because you have the right heart and right zeal. I mean, a lot of people grow up in a wrong doctrine, right? A lot of people grow up in Jehovah's Witness, Catholicism, any other things out there, right? But if their heart is right, Lord's going to show them the truth. And they have the opportunity to get right, right? When devil attacks, if your heart is right, if you're constantly in a prayer meeting with the Lord, if you're constantly praying, Lord's going to, Solve the problem for you. I mean, don't you want Lord to solve it for you? What do you want to solve it? <laughs> Everybody, Americans want free stuff. See, if you're at work, if someone says, you know, I'm going to do that project for you, but you get all the glory, right? No strings attached, you know? I'm like, okay. <laughs> right? I mean, unless, like, unless you're like, you are someone who wants to get in trouble all the time, right? Or who wants to go above and beyond and really, really suffer. Average people, when those things come, they're going to accept it. But when it comes to spiritual things, when it comes to things of God, people have a really hard time just giving everything to the Lord, just trusting in the Lord, right? You just have to put on Christ, as Romans 13, 14 says. You know, let the Lord do everything. That's, you do your best, but leave it in God's hand, right? Just like, you know, we always say when we witness, you know, we plant the seed. That's all you and I do. Yes. Let the Lord be the harvester. Let him do everything. In every part of your life, when you're resisting the devil, when you're using the armor of God, you're using this weapon, you have to understand that it's not my brain that's helping me. Right. No. It's not my physical strength that's helping me. No. It's not my agility, adaptability. No. It's my dependence on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that's helping me. Yeah. You have to make sure of that. You know, worst thing that could happen to a Christian is being independent. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yes. When we start becoming independent from the Lord, right. and man, Satan goes, okay. It's like this. You know, when you have a baby, you always want to have your baby near you. Right? Yeah. You know, always near you, in your sight. Right? Because you never know. When that coyote is going to come and snatch your baby away, which happens here and there, yeah. right? Or when a loose wild dog, you know, attacks your child. So you always have your 
eyes on your baby. Let the Lord always have his eyes on you. He lives in you anyways, yeah. right? right? I mean, you're part of the body of Christ. Yeah, Why don't you let the Lord take care of everything in your life? You have to be relying on the Lord. Again, we always have to balance it, but you can't be lazy, right? You know, you can't be lying on your bed. Lord, you know, yeah. read the Bible for me. Yes. <laughs> Lord, you know, memorize the Bible for me, right? Lord, send me those checks. <laughs> no, no, you do your best. You know, because the Bible says, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. So you have to do everything as if you're doing unto the Lord. And then you put on Christ, and this prayer is going to help you, right? Amen. And then the prayer is going to start coming out where you start hearing brethren. You know, some people are like, oh, what are they talking about? Some people are going to start pleading the blood of Jesus Christ, Amen. right? They rely on the blood of Jesus Christ, yeah. right? So you got to you gotta start understand. You're like, I don't know what you're talking about. You need to study the Bible more, you know? That's, that, then you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You know, you can't be always just sitting there and then you feel like you could learn everything through just the preaching, through the Bible study. It's just like an hour or two. You have to actually spend time on, alone, you know, your own quiet time and start studying the Word of God. Amen. And then grow in the Word of God. Yes. You know, does the baby, you know, I mean, as a Christian, if you haven't grown, you know, as a baby, you know, you're just drinking milk and milk and milk. But as you grow, you got to start eating meat, yeah. right? Proteins, right? Yeah. How are you going to do it if you don't do it on your own in that regard? You got to have willingness. You know, God uses people who do have willingness, right? If you have willingness to trust in the Lord to defeat the devil's attacks, then the Lord's going to help you. But if you don't trust in the Lord and trying to defeat devil's attack, you are going to lose. And the funny thing is that devil will always have always make you feel like you're winning until the final round. You know, like a boxing match. If it goes 12 rounds, you know, he's like, okay, you could you could just hit me, hit me. I mean, he could be bleeding, looks like bleeding and everything, but he doesn't feel anything, you know. Like, just keep on doing it, keep on doing it, keep on doing it. It's like, you know, if a grown-up man is fighting a, you know, four-year-old, and they're hitting, you know, hitting their legs and stuff, you don't feel anything, you know. But based on the punch count, you know, they're winning, right? Yeah, the scoring system, right? But suddenly, you know, 12 rounds comes up. This is the last round. And the devil goes, okay, it's my time. He just swings his arm once, and you're knocked out. Yeah. You were winning the first 11 rounds. And then 12th round, you're done. That's what's happening to many Christians. You think that you're winning against the devil on your own, right? You're like, okay, I'm doing good. You know, I've been going to street preaching. You know, I've been witnessing to soul. You know, I haven't been doing many of the sins that I used to do. Say, you, say you're addicted to dope, right? I haven't done it for like years and years, you know. Doing good, doing good, you know. And suddenly, the devil comes in. Okay, time for me to knock you out. And then, boom, he takes your health away. I'm like, oh, I have to rely on something. And then you go back to your doping ways. Yeah. Gives me relief. You haven't done it for 10 years. Your health is failing. I need it. I need it. Devil's like, look at you now. That's how you're going to finish. You're going to die as a miserable Christian addicted to dope again. Yeah. But that's what could happen to you yeah. if you're not careful. Right. That's what's going to happen to you if you constantly think, that I'm, you know what, I'm, I'm beating the devil. You know, I'm fine, right? He hasn't attacked me in a while. You know, I guess I'm strong enough. I'm good enough, right? I was like, okay, I like you. Right you know, I'm going to get you. Just wait. You know, I'm going to get you. Wait, right? I'll let you go until the 11th round because I never miss 12th round yeah. because it's my round because I get all the glory. And I could tell God, hey, look at him. Look yeah. at him. You know, look at him. You know, because he's, he's always, you know, accusing you, accusing me. Yeah. 
You know, he's like, no good, no good, no good, no good. But we, I mean, we have the greatest advocate, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for that. But as far as flesh is concerned, and until the day of redemption, until the Lord comes back, right? You know, it's weak. You're going to reap what you sow. So don't be naive where some people say, oh, you know, I can't see no more. They don't know the right doctrine, right? Yeah, your soul cannot sin no more, but your flesh can definitely sin constantly. Yes. Awesome. I mean, they, they don't know the circumcision of Christ or they become so hyper and delusional, right? You and I should never fall into that trap. Right. So in conclusion, think about your life, Christian, right? When the devil attacks, what have you been doing? Have you even recognized devil's attacks lately, right? I mean, have you been praying? I mean, have you have a regular, always praying lifestyle, right? You know, people say, if you want to get healthy, you need to change your lifestyle. There's truth to it. As Christians, if you want to become healthy, if you want to be protected by the Lord, you know, yeah. spiritually, physically, mentally, you have to change your lifestyle when it comes to prayer life. Amen. I mean, without this, this prayer life, you will not going to be able to defeat the devil. Right. Yep. Because again, if you truly pray from the bottom of your heart, we realize more and more and more, man, I need to depend on the Lord more and more and more. You and I should be a 100% dependent on the Lord Christian yes. instead of here and there, right? You have to be 100% reliant instead of 99%. You know, that thing always, you know, resonates with me when, you know, Brother Daniel did a popcorn preaching on summer camp, right? You know, one person rebellion, one person resistance or hesitation is 100% rebellion, right? Yes. You know, one person non-reliance is 100%, you know, rebellion as well. You have to rely on the Lord 100% so that when the devil attacks, we can resist the devil. When the devil attacks, you can submit to the Lord. When the devil attacks, you have confidence in the Lord to win every, every battle. That is a great assurance that you and I could have, yes. that we can always be victorious because the Lord already has won everything. Right. He's never going to lose. I mean, that's the, when we sing, we're on the winning side. Let's not forget that. Let's pray. Dear Father, when it comes to our spiritual walk, sometimes we have tunnel visions where we don't recognize devil's attacks. And devil attacks us constantly, and the devil is sly, devil is subtle, and he knows exactly what our weaknesses are. Help us to understand that we can't rely on ourselves, we can't be independent. We have to be dependent on you for everything. Help us to give all, Lord. Help us not to compromise. Help us not to be that majority serving Christian, but help us to be wholehearted, 100% serving Christian. If there's been anything that's come in our way, having right relationship with you, Lord God, help us to get right. Help us to confess our sins. And help us to get up again in serving you. I pray that you'll be with everyone here and those who aren't able to make it. Please, Lord. You know each person's needs, Lord, whatever it is, Lord God, you will provide it. Help us not rely on the worldly things. Help us not rely on the fleshly and devilish things, but just rely on you. And I pray that you bless the rest of the services today. And above all, you know, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.